What's going on YouTube? This is Ribo back at the fake bench today and today I have a really fun cut or carry knife review. Uh, this time looking at the Monterey Bay Knives EWC. So it's the MBK EWC and I'm sure that I will mess that up because they have uh, several knives that are all named very very similarly um, and I confuse them pretty much every day. Um, but this was loaned in for review from Aaron, so thank you very much, Aaron. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is a knife that uh, is pretty hard to come by, um, and so he, he graciously uh, let me check it out, and uh, very, very glad that he did, um, because it's a really cool knife. Um, so if you can't tell by looking at it, this is a Ray Laconico design, uh, very, very similar to a lot of his design. He has some design tendencies that are pretty easy to identify. Um, and so he does a lot of work with MBK and, um, you know, I, I was very, very excited to check this out, um, primarily because, and this will get us into the size comparison, I am a huge, huge fan of the Keen. Um, so this is the Mass Drop Keen, another Laconico design, as you can see right there. Um, but uh, I'm a big, big fan of the Keen. Uh, this one recently anodized by a buddy of mine, and I will put a link to, you can see I already scratched the pocket clip there. Um, I'll put a link to his, uh, his Instagram. Uh, it does awesome work. I uh, really, really like this. I actually have a second knife on the way from him right now um, that I'm super, super excited about, but uh, I wanted to change from the purple, and so I went with this awesome kind of Charlotte Hornets teal color. Uh, so I'm really, really excited, excited about that. Um, but uh, anyway, Ray Laconico, uh, I'm a big fan of, and I, I love the Keen. So this is, the I think, the second uh, Laconico knife that I've, I've gotten to check out, unless I'm forgetting something. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can see kind of some, some similarities here. Um, and then the only other size comparison I'll do is just with a small Sabenza, just to give you a sense that this is very, very similar to the small Sabenza in terms of size and kind of overall um, profile, uh, although obviously pretty uh, symmetrical in design. Uh, so hopefully that's good for some size comparison. So let's go ahead and get into the review, things that I like and don't like about the EWC. Um, I guess I should go over some kind of initial specs. Uh, this is about two ounces. This is M390. Um, and one of the interesting things about this is that this is a non-locking knife. So this is uh, this is just essentially a slip joint. And it's very interesting how this works. You have um, this liner right here that is not exactly flush. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm not really going to be able to show exactly how this works on camera, um, but it is very, very cool. Um, so you just apply some pressure and this closes just like that. Um, and then this is not a front flipper, um, but this has this very interesting flipper tab here, but that is profiled up. It's got a lot of jimping on there. And so it does flip right open like that. So a lot of really interesting things about the knife. So let's go ahead and get into things that I like. Um, so number one, uh, like I just said, I really like the way that this knife deploys. Um, so a lot of times, you know, you can have uh, knife designers or manufacturers who decide to do kind of, um, you know, f different things just for the sake of, of being a little bit different. They try some new mechanism and it, it just kind of falls flat because while it might be cool and flashy, it's not really practical. Um, this, when I first looked at it, when I pulled it out of the box, I thought that's exactly what this is. This is them trying to do something cool, but practically it's just not gonna work. And I have been very, very impressed that this is uh, is a lot better than most traditional flippers, in in my opinion. Uh, I mean, this is 100% reliable. Um, there's something about the angle of this uh, that really makes this effective. I have no issues deploying it, and the jimping is perfect. Uh, this is honestly what the jimping on uh, the Keen is missing. Um, this grabs really, really easily, uh, deploys 100% of the time, and I'm a big, big fan of it. Um, plus, you you kind of eliminate the the whole issue of this sticking out so aesthetically it really works as well and it kind of fits with the rest of the knife uh, it slides in the pocket obviously this is going to have a very very slim uh, profile for the carry um, but uh, big big fan of how this carries and how this this actually uh, works in terms of the uh, the flipper on here um, other things that I like, so as you may know, if you watch other videos of mine, I do not like carbon fiber. I just, it's not my thing. I've never liked it aesthetically. There's been very, very few exceptions to that, um, including like the uh, Spyderco Capara. 
This I love. This, for whatever reason, really, really works to me. I, I don't know if it's the fact that it's just carbon fiber and you, it's not inlays, it's not, you know. One of the things I dislike about carbon fiber is it's so busy that it often competes with the kind of visual aesthetic of the knife. Um, with something like this, it's so simple and it's classic Laconico that it just really works. It puts all the emphasis on that cool carbon fiber pattern and you don't really have a ton else competing with it. And I think it works really, really well. I think it looks really sweet. Um, and so from a guy who's not a carbon fiber guy, I really like this carbon fiber. Other things that I like about the knife, um, obviously overall design. I like the Laconico aesthetic. I like simplicity. I like um, I, I like everything about it. I, I think he typically does a very good job of mashing form and function. And so I really like that about this knife. Other things that I like, I love the blade. I mean, one of the reasons that I like the Keen so much is you just have this big blade that's got a very, very nice, very thin grind on it, and it just makes a really uh, kind of pleasing slicing blade. Um, one of those blades that you just want to cut with. Um, and granted, it's not going to be absolutely perfect for everything, but this is really good for a lot of things. This is really good for actual everyday tasks. And what I like about that is that for a knife that is so, um, I don't know, so pretty, uh, it's so kind of highly sought after, it's, uh, it's a popular designer, it's, you know, it's a limited knife in a lot of ways. Uh, it is still incredibly practical. And so I really, really like that because knives are tools to me. And so I, I like a knife that can actually be a knife. And this knife can be a knife. Uh, I like that it's got this, the sharpening choil down here. It's a nice little detail. Um, and, and overall, it's just an excellent blade. I love the fact that it's it's clean. There's nothing on it besides the MBK logo, which I think is a pretty neat logo um, for a knife. So I, I really like that. Um, and just an overall nice looking and nice uh, functioning blade. Other things that I like about the knife, I love how lightweight it is. I love how it carries in the pocket. Uh, obviously, you can look at this guy and say this is a two, you know roughly two ounce knife. Very very slim, very short. Uh, it's going to carry super well, and it and it carries excellent. I think the pocket clip is really really good on this knife. Um, I uh, I've carried this quite a bit, and I think the tension is really nice. Uh, you know, it slides in no problems. It's not going to be the absolute best um, you know clip, but I think it. It's, it's really, really good. Um, it, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily match the full aesthetic of the knife to me. I, I understand what they're doing with some of the design cues here. Um, you have kind of this bead blasted or stone washed titanium here, which doesn't necessarily match the, uh, the blade exactly right, but I don't think it looks bad. And I think it overall, it, it matches the knife pretty well. Um, I could see maybe coming down a hair longer on the pocket clip, but I think that this one's just fine. Other things that I like about the knife, um, I really like the fact that it is non-locking. I think it, it's kind of cool. It adds something a little bit different to this knife, obviously increases the legality in certain places. Um, and I really like the mechanism, which again, I'm not going to go into, but uh, it's pretty interesting to see how that works. I don't know if I can get this on camera, how that pops out, but uh, really, really neat. Uh, just kind of an added, added dimension to the knife. Um, and then finally, I, I, I like when, uh, I like the Ray Laconico. I, I've always liked that on the, the spine of the blade. I think that's really, really cool. Um, the, the other thing that I say, and I, I usually don't mention the price of knives like this, um, because the price is just something I, I typically don't address. Sometimes I do. Um, but this was $180 when it was released, uh, sold out pretty quickly. Very, very difficult to get. Um, well, I think that's a really good price for the knife. Um, you know, it, you do have some supply and demand issues there. It's like if, if everyone's, if they're selling out immediately and everyone's trying to get them, you should probably raise the price or make them more available. And so I, I wish that this knife was more available and that's kind of merging us into the things that I don't like. Um, I wish that I could go out and get this knife right now because I would definitely go out and get this knife. It, it's great. I would carry it all the time, uh, but I can't because uh, they, uh, they're they very, very difficult to get and they, they sell out very, very quickly. Um, so that's one thing I, I don't love. 
Um, the other thing, so this is M390. Um, you know, there, there's nothing to dislike necessarily, but for me, I'm going to say I dislike it. And that's because I'm very uh, practical about my knives. I like to be able to sharpen them myself. I don't want to rely on anyone else. Um, and so this is going to be a challenge to do that. And it's probably going to be something that I'm not going to be able to maintain. So for me personally, I would prefer this in a different steel. And I think you could still justify the $180 price if this was in a different steel. Um, just my opinion. Uh, but M390 to me is just, it's never been a selling point. Uh, it sounds, you know, it, it's a its a good steel and super steel and all that. But um, it, it's, it's going to be more of a detractor to me than anything. Uh, and other things I don't like, that's probably it. I mean, the only other thing I could think of that I may not like is the fact that this is a little bit slick and doesn't have a ton of traction. I mean, the jimping here is pretty much just to use on the flipper. You can't really, I mean, you can feel it, but it's not going to give you anything, um, on the grip. But when I think about what this knife is for, it's not really a, a work knife like that. This is more of a suit knife or a, a dress-up knife. Not a dress-up knife, but, it, you know, it, this is this is not a hard-use knife. This is a slip joint, gentleman's carry, really cool take on, on an everyday carry knife. And so I don't really hold that against it. But besides that, uh, I love this knife. This is going to be a strong carry for me. I, I This is definitely one that's going to go on my list. This is definitely one that I would want to own in the future, and I'm a big, big fan of it. So um, thank you, Aaron, for letting me check this one out. It's been awesome to, uh, to get to carry it and cut with it a little bit, and it'll be headed back to you shortly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.